You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome into the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I am your host, John Neighbors. I am also the host of Out of Bounds. You can catch every weekday afternoon from 1 to 4 on 103.7 The Buzz and 1037thebuzz.com. I'm going to talk a little Razorback basketball today as I uh, gave a little bit of an idea of what we're looking at and what we're thinking about and how we feel about Arkansas's chances of actually winning the SEC and everything this year, too. And then tomorrow's podcast, we're going to dive more into Arkansas and UAPB in that matchup coming in on Saturday, which I know everybody's looking forward to. But basketball, people are excited about for all the right reasons. And honestly, there's no better person than to talk to than going to Curtis Wilkerson, who writes for hogsports.com, does basketball as well as recruiting analyst. He was there at the red-white game. He does a great job covering all things Razorback basketball, and he joins us on the phone lines right now. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into it. Curtis, appreciate you joining us this afternoon, man. How you doing? Hey, I'm doing good. Thanks for having me on. I've been looking forward to it. Absolutely. Well, let's just start with Razorback basketball, because obviously you were there at the red-white game. Uh, You know about all the things going on with them, but just the preseason third in the SEC, 16th ranked overall, Devo Davis, all SEC second team. What do you make of those rankings and those uh, those awards? Do you think it's too low, too high? What what do you make of the preseason value that people are putting into Arkansas? Well, uh, I don't know. Maybe I'm a little bit biased. I think some of that might be a little bit low. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's pretty interesting to me. I, I got a kick out of it. You know, it's, this is the first time that Arkansas – has been in the AP top 25 in the preseason, I think, since 2007. It's, it's the highest they've been ranked in it since, I think, the 2000-2001 season. Uh, and a lot of people are ticked, you know, and, and I think that's awesome. That kind of goes to show you the momentum that the program has right now. Uh, you know, pick third in the SEC today, uh, I, I'm okay with that. You know, I, I, don't, I don't think there's a, a large margin between those top three teams in terms of talent in Alabama and, and Arkansas and Kentucky there. Uh, I like to see Devo Davis, you know, get get honored with the All SEC pick. Uh, but you know, if it's if it's triggered Tuesday, I, I think the thing that's got me going a little bit is that JD Note wasn't on there. It, I just, you know, a guy who gets an award like uh, like SEC Sixth Man of the Year last year, and he's kind of a proven commodity, one of the returning leading scorers in the conference on one of the best teams. Uh, somebody thought enough of him to vote him. As, uh, as SEC preseason player of the year, but he's not one of the best 12 players in the conference. I, I just I find that one interesting. So if I had to pick a snub, that would probably be it. What were your takeaways from the red-white game in general and then especially some of the new additions? Yeah, you know, the, the red-white game in general, it, it was interesting. You know, the last time I was that close, you know, just kind of courtside right on top of the action. Uh, was at the Elite Eight, John, we were sitting right beside each other. Yeah. Uh, and one thing that really stood out to me was just how much just just bigger and physically stronger Baylor looked uh, compared to Arkansas on the floor. Uh, and I think it showed at times throughout that game. And then I you know, walked in at Barn Hill Arena, and the first thing I noticed uh, was just how much bigger and, and physically stronger Arkansas looks this year compared to last year. Uh, and you can tell that, you know, the weight room, was a heavy area of emphasis in the off season. Uh, the guys that that Musselman went out and got out of the portal are, are they're grown men. You know these are experienced, strong, veteran guys. Uh, so they definitely look the part uh, more than last year. And, and hey, there was an elite, elite eight team last year. So I think that's probably a good omen. Uh, you know, the game itself, in terms of the the newcomers who stood out, uh, man, Stanley Amude, the the transfer out of South Dakota, you know, six six. He's kind of filling that that Justin Smith spot in the lineup, uh, but is a completely different player than than Justin was. You know, I, I think Justin was probably a better defender uh, with the things that he was able to do all around there. But in terms of uh, his offensive game, uh, Amude is really polished, and, and he can fill it up in a lot of ways. Uh, probably a, a better perimeter player than I thought he was. He was you know, kind of taking guys off the dribble and creating some some jump shots for himself. Uh, really quick release on that three. Also, was going to run some sets for him. They were posting him up, and he's scoring in the post. So kind of a guy that can get it done at all three levels. Uh, I think he's going to be a really good player for him. Uh, you know, Chris Likes, the, the point guard out of Miami, he's, he's still got a little bit of room to go in terms of learning the playbook. And, and Muslim has mentioned that a couple times, uh, which, you know, that happens with transfers who are, who are coming in, especially point guards where you got to know every position uh, and, and, and everything like that. But, 
uh, man, when he gets going in the open floor, just turning the corner off of a ball screen or something like that, uh, he's just got a different gear, a different speed than anybody else out there. And he's a guy that's kind of like J.D. Note, where he can just create his shot whenever he wants to. So uh, those two guys probably stood out the most. And, and another one that I think has kind of flown under the radar uh, but has been really impressive is Jackson Robinson. You know, it's a, a redshirt freshman, so a younger transfer coming in. But, you know, when you got a guy that's 6'6", 6'7", with, with kind of the wink that he has, it's just a knockdown shooter. And he's low maintenance, like Musselman has said, a guy that is always in the right spots, doing the right things. They don't have to get on to him. He understands the system. Uh, that's a pretty good recipe to find yourself in the rotation. But I think he's kind of a candidate for a you know, maybe a dark horse or a surprise guy this season. We'll continue our conversation with Curtis Wilkerson here in just a second. But first, I got to tell you about sweat block wipes because we've been talking about this for a few weeks now. And these wipes that stop sweat up to seven days. It seems that people have been listening because we have a lot of people that have been talking about how much they love. And I've even had a few people that reached out to me and said, Hey, I thought you were crazy. I thought it was just some random ad that you were reading just for fun. And he's like, No, I tried it, got the deal on it. And it actually works. It's incredible. And I'm talking about guys that I know that sweat a lot, too. So it works, folks. You got to try this out. If you're having these problems with the excessive sweat, try it out. I guarantee you will not be disappointed. It's doctor created and doctor recommended. It's got dry shirt guarantees. And if sweat block doesn't keep you dry, you get your money back. It's not just for armpits. It's for chest. It's for back. It's for feet. It's for hands. You can use it anywhere. And I mean anywhere that sweats if you or someone you know is dealing with excessive sweat you have to check out sweat block so get it today at 20 percent off at sweatblock.com using promo code locked on or at cvs or amazon you are locked on razorbacks your daily arkansas razorbacks podcast We'll continue our conversation with Curtis Wilkerson here in just a second, but I got to remind you that this episode is brought to you by Rock Auto. With the ever increasing makes and models, it is now impossible for your local chain auto parts store to stock all the car parts you will ever need. Save time and money when you use Rock Auto. It's a family business, it's been serving do it yourselfers for 20 years. And the prices are reliably low for every customer. And they have everything you need from brake parts to tail lamps to motor oil, even new carpet. Go and explore the easy-to-use website today and find the solution to your auto part needs. If you go to rockauto.com right now and see all the car parts available for your car or truck, be sure to write Locked On and How Did You Hear About Us box so that they know that we sent you amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the car parts you'll ever need at rockauto.com. So obviously we know that uh, there's still ways until the season really gets going. And then as far as figuring things out, but like last year, you know, Musselman and the team, they really only had like seven guys play. Sometimes you only had six. Like it was very, uh, there wasn't, there was guys coming off the bench, but the depth uh, wasn't something of note because you were able to win with the guys that you had. Do you see something similar like that happening again this year? Or uh, do you see maybe having more rotations coming in while also, knowing who uh, who you think is going to be the starting five once the season starts. Yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be really interesting. You know, one thing early on in the season last year, uh, Musselman did go a little bit deeper than he normally would. I, I think it's because he was just trying to figure out the right combinations. And, uh, you know, another thing that factored into that is, you know, with, with COVID and everything going on last year, uh, they weren't able to take advantage of those two exhibition games in the preseason, and they'll have that luxury this year. So, you know, the early games that counted on the win-loss record, he was going, you know, 10 deep at times, uh, just trying to figure things out. So uh, I there will be some of that, obviously, these, these exhibition games, but probably early on in the season, uh, the schedule does kind of stiffen up earlier. They've got that tournament in Kansas City. They're going to play uh, Kansas State, and you might have a matchup with Illinois early on. So they're going to have to figure it out pretty quick. Uh, I do think the good thing, you know, they have got a little bit more returning experience with this group. Uh, and, and then, you know, from there, it's going to be how those transfers kind of shake out and, and who plays well with each other. Uh, you know, I, I think that at the, end of the, at the end of the day, once we get into SEC play and things like that, it's probably going to be about a seven-man rotation with that you know, eighth, maybe ninth guy uh, evolving a little bit, you know, based on matchups. That, but, you know, I think the bulk of the minutes is probably going to go to seven. Uh, you know, if I had to pick a, a starting lineup, you know, it sounds like they're pretty committed to, to Devo Davis there at the point guard position. I thought he looked really good there uh, on Sunday in the red-white game, which is you know kind of a change for him in position from where he was last year. Um, you know, 
I think you could go either way with, with J.D. Note or, or Chris Weiss. I know Note was so good in that six-man role, but uh, like Busselman said, hey, if you're one of the best players and, and you've earned it and you want your role to expand, he's not ruling out throwing Note in that starting lineup. I wouldn't be surprised if you maybe see that early on uh, as they bring on some of these other transfers and get them acclimated. Uh, I like Aldis Tony, the pit transfer on the wing. He's a 6'6", six, six, strong physical guy, a lefty. Uh, maybe at that three spot. I think Amude is pretty locked in at the four. I mean, it, like I said, he's he's been pretty impressive. Uh, and then Jalen Williams, I think is you know this guy has been battling injuries here in the preseason, but uh, you know he just looks so much more confident. He's he's really leaned out his body, uh, knocked down a couple threes. I, I think he's ready to make a big jump this season. So uh, I'd probably go Devo, Note, uh, Tony Amude, Williams in my projected starting five. If I had to pick today. Part of Muss's philosophy that we're getting used to seeing is there, there's turnover in this roster. So is it unfair expectations to put on this year's team based on last year's success, but you pretty much have a new team in place? Yeah, maybe so. Uh, but I think, you know, that part of the expectations that come with it is just the success that Musselman's had in doing this. And, you know, it goes back to, his days coaching the NBA and, and even in the G League, where it's just it, there's just so much turnover, you know, with guys getting, you know, traded and, and traded and signings and things like that. It, it, he's got different guys, you know, every few weeks. Uh, so he's kind of grown accustomed to having those changes. Uh, I've had a lot of it at Nevada. Obviously, we know how active he is in the transfer pool every year. So, uh, you know, I think you see the amount of, of talent that they have coming in, and it's going to take a little bit of time to mesh, probably. Uh, so I, you know, I, I would caution people if there are some early hiccups or you know maybe they're not uh, looking as sharp as they were during the Elite Eight run at the end of last year. I, I wouldn't worry about it too much. You know, it's going to take time for these guys to gel and uh, kind of figure out their roles. And, and every team's going to have a new identity just because you have uh, you know a Devo Davis and, and Jalen and JD and guys like that back doesn't mean the team's going to have the same makeup and identity that it did last year. So. Those things are going to take time to figure out. The goal is to kind of streamline that process as much as you can and, and get them going and kind of firing all, all cylinders by SEC play. Uh, but, you know, I, I think with these preseason projections, uh, really you're looking at what teams did last year and you're looking at the talent they have on the roster going into the to the upcoming season. You look at both of those things, I, I think it's warranted for Arkansas to be picked, you know, top 20, top 15 in the country because they've got that kind of makeup. We'll continue our conversation with Curtis Wilkerson here in just a second. First, back and better than ever, a new web interface for the start of basketball season and more props and odds than ever before at betonline.ag. It's your number one spot for all basketball and football action this season. Head to the new updated desktop and mobile device uh, website today and sign up, and you will receive 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use promo code Locked On to receive your bonus. BetOnline.ag is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports, so check it out again at BetOnline.ag, where the game starts. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily Arkansas Razorbacks podcast. Now, you mentioned the SEC, and obviously Arkansas being picked to finish third. Kentucky's number one, but, you know, what else is new? Alabama, too. Uh, you know, there's other teams in the mix as well. But how do you see the SEC shaking up this year? It's definitely come a long way from just 10 years ago. But uh, how, how do you feel like what are the teams that are really going to have to watch for and that may be uh, the teams that Arkansas is going to have to circle on their schedule because they're going to be some tough matchups? Yeah, you know, obviously, I, I think it starts at the top, and I and I really do. I, I think I mentioned this earlier, but in terms of just sheer talent, I don't see a lot of difference between the top three there in Kentucky, Alabama, and, and Arkansas. So, uh, I think those are three teams that are going to be right in the thick of it throughout the season. Uh, you know, you look at, at Tennessee there at number four; uh, they kind of they seem like a team that might be a little bit slept on to me. You know, they, they had a really good season, faded a little bit down the stretch last year, but. I mean, they've got a lot of talent coming back. A lot of guys have played a lot of SEC basketball. They've added a really good point guard that I think could be a game changer for them and Kendi Chandler. So I keep an eye on Tennessee. Auburn had a rough year last year, uh, but they've got a lot coming back, and they did really well for themselves in the transfer portal uh, and the recruiting-wise. So wouldn't be surprised to see a little bit of a bounce back from them. Uh, you know, LSU and Florida are always going to be tough out. 
One that kind of got my eye on is Mississippi State. Uh, I think that might surprise some people, but I mean, you've got a guy like Iverson Molinar coming back, who's you know, one of the premier scorers in the league. And then they're another team that really went out and did a lot in the transfer portal. They've got just a ton of size. And it seems like that's always the case for Mississippi State, but uh, they've also got some scoring punch in that backcourt to go with it this year. So I, I think they might be a team that's a little bit better than that uh, number eight ranking that they had in the preseason. Now, Curtis, we don't want to look past this year's team, but because of Muss's philosophy and turnover in the roster, it opens the door for one-and-dones to – Look at Arkansas as a place to go. And we saw that door open because of Moses Moody coming to Arkansas and then leaving as a one and done. So with the talent that's coming in after this year, you see that some of the guys who are projected to be one and dones, they're wanting to come into Arkansas. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. Uh, just the amount of momentum that Arkansas has on the recruiting trail right now it, you know, it's, what's fascinating to me about it is they, they picked up three commitments fairly early. You know, they've had Joseph Pinion for a long time. And then within a few weeks of each other over the summer, they got Barry Dunning and Darian Ford. And then there was kind of a lull. And, you know, when, when Khalil Ware uh, chose Oregon, uh, you know, a lot of people started getting frustrated. And, and you know, they, they kind of, in a lot of ways, people thought maybe it was a foregone conclusion that Nick Smith Jr. is going to go elsewhere also. Uh, but obviously he didn't. And that's just such a big win, you know, to, to, to keep a five-star at home, a top-ten guy, uh, obviously another one that projects his potential one and done. Uh, that's huge for Arkansas. But then to go out and get Jordan Walsh, uh, you know, it's one thing to, to keep a guy like that right in the backyard. Uh, but to go out and to, you know, a Texas kid who's being recruited heavily by Chris Beard uh, and to win that battle and gain that commitment, another guy who, uh, I think I think the sky's the limit for Jordan Walsh. He's just so athletic and uh, just kind of fits that modern day positionless basketball. You can just do so many different things with him. Uh, that's just huge. And you know, to go uh, just to think about where Musselman was when he started here with this program, uh, to bring in that class like he did in 2020, to have the success that they did last year, and then to have this kind of recruiting class. Uh, man, they're just trending in the right direction. So the momentum is crazy. Uh, and if they can build off of, of what they've done with a good year this year, uh, bring in that 2022 class, I mean, it's shaping up to be a, a pretty special time for Arkansas basketball. You know, the guy that we've even been asked about today was Anthony Black, which, you know, if you look at a lot of the experts and everybody, it seems like Oklahoma State's in the mix. But yet, oh, just since the Jordan Walsh commitment, it seems like he's gained a little traction. People are saying, hey, this is a possibility, too. Uh, what do you know about him and uh, the chances that Arkansas could find a way to get an additional five-star on their roster of the 2023 class? Yeah, that, that's nuts, isn't it? It, it? It's true. You know, for for the longest time, it seemed like Oklahoma State was trending there for Anthony Black, and, and, and maybe they still are, but, uh, you know, since then, he's taken visits to Arkansas and, and to Gonzaga was his most recent visit. Uh, you know, and I think all three of those schools are very much in the mix, but you know, you just you take a look at the momentum that Arkansas has built with Nick Smith, with Jordan Wallace. And, uh, hey, Fayetteville is the place to be right now, and, and a guy like Anthony Black sees that. Uh, you know, I think there's probably some some allure to. You know, you think about the NBA with these super teams and you know the Big Three and, and everything like that that we remember over these recent years. Uh, something to be said for doing that at the college level and the exposure that comes along with that. So. Uh, I think Arkansas is very much in the thick of things with Anthony Black. Uh, not sure on his commitment timeline just yet. You know, originally this was a guy who wanted to make his decision before the understanding period. He's just a few weeks away, uh, having some, some eligibility issues. Uh, nothing that would affect his college days, but uh, over at Duncanville with some transfer stuff going on right now. So he's got to figure that out first before he makes a decision on his commitment. But, uh, yeah, I mean, Arkansas is very much in the thick of things there with Anthony Black. So overall this year, um, how do you see this team shaping up? Yeah, I, I think it could be a really good year. And, and here's the thing with that, you know, off the top of my head, you know, I was kind of thinking about some season predictions and things like that earlier today. But, uh, you know, with Bud Walton being sold out, uh, we all know the kind of atmosphere that that can be. Uh, to me, if you're going to come into Fayetteville and beat the Razorbacks this year, you better be at least 10 points better than them. And I just don't know that that many teams are. So you got 19 home games. You should win 
pretty much all of those. Uh, and then if you just go 500 on the road, that's 25 wins right there. And I think that puts you in a really good spot to, to meet or even kind of exceed some of these preseason expectations. So, you know, we'll see how things shape up. It, you know, there was something special about that team last year, so Arkansas is going to have to gel, kind of find out what their identity is. You, you know, even though they're physically stronger, they're not the tallest team in the world, so how are they going to rebound and protect the brand? Those are things that we'll learn over the first few weeks of the season. Uh, but, man, in, in terms of just sheer talent uh, and the makeup of the roster and especially the firepower they have on the perimeter, uh, they're going to be a tough out this year. So I, I think it could be another special season. Am I crazy, Curtis, for thinking that this team is better than last year's team? I know that going to the Elite Eight is a tough thing to do because once you get into the NCAA tournament, it comes a crapshoot. But mm-hmm. it, it do, am I crazy for thinking that this year's basketball team is going to be better than last year's basketball team? No, you're you're not crazy in thinking that at all. I, I, and I know exactly the thought process you're going through, but, uh, you know, in a lot of ways, Last year's team, uh, it was special in terms of the way they came together uh, and really fed off of each other's energy and, and played as one unit. Uh, but they probably overachieved. It's just that's just kind of the fact of it. Uh, this team, on paper, top to bottom, there's more talent. Uh, so you know, the job now for the coaching staff is to get all that to come together in the right way and kind of capture that same magic that they had last season. Uh, but just you know, man on man. Uh, an on-paper look, this team is more talented, so the ceiling might be a little bit higher. And like you said, you know, once you get to the NCAA tournament, it's a crapshoot. It's all about the matchups. But uh, I do like the potential makeup of this group in terms of being able to, you know, kind of adapt and, and be a chameleon of sorts based on, you know, game-to-game matchups. They had that a little bit last year, but, you know, Muslim has got a lot of versatility on this roster where you can do a lot of different things. So, you know, if those guys buy in the way that last year's group did uh, and, and come together and obviously knock on wood, stay healthy, uh, yeah, they could be better than last year. Crazy to say, but I, I'm with you. I think it's true. Well, Curtis, man, we appreciate you hopping on with us. We know it's an exciting time for you over at Hog Sports for basketball season. And, folks, if you want to follow him on Twitter, at Kurt Wilkerson underscore, does a great job of basketball as well as recruiting analyst for hogsports.com. Appreciate it, man. Enjoy the season, and I know we'll be catching up with you later down the road. It sounds so good. Thanks for having me on again anytime. Well, appreciate everybody listening in to the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or on Google Play. You can also get after me on Twitter at BuzzJohnNeighbors for any questions, comments, concerns that you may have. We'll keep it going from there. Same podcast time, same podcast channel tomorrow afternoon. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you then. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily Arkansas Razorbacks podcast. 